What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Sophie. If you're not, welcome back. Today we are going to be talking about what's inside my makeup bag, but not just what's inside my makeup bag, but also we are going to be talking about what's inside this huge, yes, this huge bag that I actually bring to work with me every day. That's basically my makeup bag. I have a smaller makeup bag that I keep all the essentials in, but I also have that big old bag because I need to bring a lot of stuff with me. Sometimes I curl my hair at work. I also have a couple extra things that I bring with me. Maybe I will show you everything that's inside that mess of a bag. But first we will start off with what is in my makeup bags. So I'll start my routine from beginning to end so you guys can get an idea of what I use, when I use it. Not really doing a makeup tutorial type video Video right now if you guys want to see one it is very short and simple because when you wake up early like I do you learn to simplify your routine so I'll kick off the video by starting off with how I prep my face I always prep my face with moisturizer I think it's a Neutrogena just water-based moisturizer it helps my face so it doesn't get oily throughout the day then I will go in with a makeup primer recently I picked up this anti redness makeup obsession I want to say is the brand it's an anti redness primer it comes out and it's actually green. Would you look at that? So I like this one because it actually is supposed to cancel out redness. Now, I've only been using this for about a week or two. I can't really say if it's canceling out the redness or not. It seems to be working just fine as a primer itself. I actually picked out the anti-redness because when I'm out in the sun, like most of us are in the summer, my nose attracts the sun and it is always red along with my face. And yes, I know you're supposed to wear sunscreen. I wear sunscreen but I cannot escape the sun. Somehow it always burns my face just a little bit, so I like to go in with that anti-redness primer. I actually used to use a Bare Minerals neutralizing primer. It was yellow, I believe, which is also supposed to help cancel out redness. I felt like it worked, and I feel like this one works, but once I prime my face, I also go in with a Lorac eyeshadow primer, just a little. Just a little eyeshadow primer. Uh, I feel like it actually helps keep my eyeshadow on quite a bit, and I do notice a difference when I don't use it. I always. Hello? I do notice the difference when I don't use it. I don't know if you want to call it fallout or what, but from my mascara touching my eyelids, I always get that weird black lines from it. And when I use an eyeshadow primer, I do not get that. So highly recommend an eyeshadow primer. Truthfully, I have tried a million brands of it. I think they all work pretty much the same, so I wouldn't break the budget with it. Really any brand will work fine. I have an e.l.f. one, which I think is like a dollar, or the Zorak one's probably like 15 bucks. So any eyeshadow primer will work well, especially if you're looking to keep your eyeshadow on for at least the majority of the day. The eyeshadow that I have on right now is actually from this morning and it's it's still on pretty good. What I do next is I throw on my eyeshadow, which I have been using for quite some time, as you will see. This. <laughs> this is the Lorac Pro 3, Pro Palette 3. I love it because it has quite a bit of matte shades, but it also has a few shimmer shades, which some people say don't wear shimmer on your eyelids when you're on TV, but I like the way that it looks, so every now and again, I'll throw on a little bit of shimmer. As you can see, I have a favorite shimmer. It's this one right here. It's nothing too crazy, but truthfully, I don't change my makeup up too often when I'm on the news. I don't want to be distracting to people. I'm trying to deliver the news. It's not a beauty show, so I'll just switch up little things like that, like my eyeshadow shimmer, which truthfully, nobody can probably tell the difference besides me, which is just fine, as long as it makes you happy, right? So after I throw on my eyeshadow, which I do very, very quickly, I go in with some liquid liner. It is ColourPop liquid liner. I think it's their BFF one. It's a liquid felt tip liner in black and I just make a couple little wings as you can possibly see there. And once I'm done with that, I hop onto my face. My best friend thinks that I do my makeup backwards because I do my eyeshadow first, but there's a reason for it if you're one of those people who starts with their face and then does their eyes. I actually do it because then I can avoid any fallout from my eyeshadow because then I can just kind of wipe it away if I have anything that's on there. And if you're wondering what I'm holding, it is the Tarte CC Under Eye Corrector. It's just this little pinkish, um, cream product 
and I actually just dab my finger in there, dab it across under my eyes to help cancel out some of those big under eye bags that I think we've all battled with before. When you're consistently getting not as much sleep as you probably should, you might have a few more like I do. So I find that this product works well. Something that I've come to terms with is that my under eye creases are really gonna go nowhere and I just have to deal with them. It really doesn't crease, it just sits where the creases that are on my skin are permanently laying. So uh, it doesn't make it any worse, if that helps. Once I get that under eye CC cream on, I go in with the Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation. Now, let me just tell you guys something. I have heard from so many people, they either love this foundation the same way I do, or they hate, hate, hate it. I don't know how you could possibly hate something so good. Granted, I know foundation sits on everybody's skin differently. I totally get that. There's some that I love that people hate, and there's some that I hate that people love. I get that, but I, I love this one, as you can probably tell already. This is in the shade 3N1 Ivory Beige. The reason that I love this foundation is because it actually lasts me all day long. Long. It says that it's stay in place makeup and it is not kidding. For me, that's important because I am under bright lights all morning long and then I'm out and about doing interviews with people. So I want my makeup to last quite a while. And I think this one really does the job. And that honestly is with or without a primer because sometimes there's mornings where A, you don't have time or B, you just forgot. I've been there. And this makeup still does a really good job. And then another reason why I really like it is because it goes on matte. Some people like the dewy look and don't get me wrong, I think it looks really pretty but for me the dewy look ends up making me look greasy on air which I'm definitely trying to avoid and that's just my personal opinion I don't like the way that I look when I have a lot of shininess on my face some people might like it it's just not for me so I like to stick with that foundation it is my tried and true it it rocks you guys just take my advice hopefully it works for your skin if not hopefully you got it from Ulta or Sephora where you can return it and get something that does work for your skin up next I go in with my concealer which I am currently using the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer in Light 2.5 Creme Brulee. Just comes on this little thing here. I just swipe a little here, swipe a little here. It works really, really well. Once again, the creasing thing, I don't know. It doesn't make any more creasing than I already have. I think that it lays really pretty. I think it looks natural and it has a full coverage, which once again, when you've got the under eye bags like I do, full coverage matters. So once I've got my whole face base on, I go in with some loose powder. It's just the Laura Mercier translucent powder. I get a damp sponge and I also actually use a damp sponge with my foundation and concealer and then after I get both of those on I'll go in with a damp sponge I just put it on my under eyes because I think it helps brighten them up I'm not an expert but it feels like it's doing the job and I go in with this aqua insurance jcat compact foundation and this you guys liquid gold okay it's not liquid but it is gold it is a pressed powder as you can see it is in the shade natural this stuff is amazing I love this stuff this is something that if you're not looking for on-camera makeup or you don't want such a thick coverage because this is foundation that I put on top of liquid foundation so it's thick but if you're not looking for a super thick look this can be worn on its own and it looks amazing. It is such full coverage, but instead of brushing it around in circles, I actually take my brush and I pat it in. And then I pat it on my face because it stays on so flipping good that way. It's like $12, I think, online. You can get it at Ulta, that's where I usually get it. And if you shop on Black Friday, I think it's 50% off usually. Stock up because this stuff is amazing. Very underrated, very under talked about product. I cannot stop recommending this stuff. But once I've got on all of my foundation, and whatnot, I go in with a bronzer, which is the Milani Sunkissed Shade 2 Silky Matte Bronzing Powder. Lots of words there, but it's just this compact bronzer. It's a very matte, cool tone for me, which I really like, because I just use it to contour kind of right here, right here-ish. And then I'll also go in with another bronzer, which is the Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer in shade Deep Bronzer. Looks like this. It is a bronzer with a hint of shimmer. I don't love shimmer when I'm on air. It just, it always ends up making me look greasy. You could probably barely tell that there's any sort of shimmer in it, but I really like it because I think it does give me a nice glow without making me look shiny. It just kind of ties your contour together. I kind of use a little bit more of that. And something actually with your foundation that I've always been told is look for a shade that's like one shade darker than your skin tone color. Reason being, you're under very bright lights. You are probably gonna end up looking washed out. I know when I first started, I didn't know that little trick, and so I looked very washed out. And now I've kind of learned, I also self-tan, so it's not a huge problem for me, but 
Definitely going one shade lower helps a ton with that. Once I get on my bronzer, I'll go in with a blush. I've got a couple blushes that I like to use. I've got the Tarte in Party. Just looks like this, just a little matte, nudish pink shade. And then I also have the Essence brand. It's at Ulta. It's called the Blush in shade 20 Bespoke. Bespoke? It's a silky smooth powder blush to awaken your complexion and to awaken is all I need in the morning. This one also has a little bit of shimmer in it. It's very similar actually to the butter bronzer, just in a blush shade. I like just these soft nude shades. They look a little bit more natural, which is the look that I'm going for. Though people know that it's not a natural look with my black mascara, my black eyeliner, but I like the neutral look, the more natural look on the face. Once I've got all of that stuff done, I go in with with my mascara, but I actually toss on this. This is the Lancome, uh, Lancome Super Enhancing Mascara Base. It is just a little white brush with some white fiber-ish type texture, substance, something, and it's just like a white mascara. It's supposed to be kind of like a lash primer and help make your lashes look a little bit more voluminous and thicker, which I definitely need. I have very blonde eyelashes, number one, and I also have very short eyelashes. I will curl them before I throw that on, and then I go in with my Bare Minerals Lash Topia Mega Volume Mineral Based Mascara. That is a mouthful as well. I use this just in the shade black. I recently found this on just a random trip at Marshalls. I love looking through their beauty section. You can always get really good priced beauty products there. And I saw this one and thought, who can't use another mascara? I'm always on the hunt for a new one. Saw this one, picked it up, and I have not looked back since. I've actually repurchased this three times, and I don't know if I've ever repurchased a mascara that many times in a row. This one is so good. It is such a smooth formula. And what I mean by smooth formula on your lashes, so I can actually touch my lashes and they don't feel hard. Like some of my mascaras will make my lashes feel. Every mascara to me gives me a little bit of drop down. That could be because I love throwing on coat after coat after coat of mascara. This one is such minimal drop down underneath of my eye, which is super nice because then I don't have little black flakes hanging out under there. And it's also the best mascara for layering. I'll throw on a couple layers, you know, as many as I can get in before I have to be on the show. Say I go look and I'm like, oh, I, I wanted a little bit more mascara than I've got on already. I can go Go in with this put it on and it still feels soft it doesn't feel like I've got a ton of dried mascara on my eyelashes very easy to put on and it's also very easy to take off I think it runs around $20 but it lasts me quite a while and it works so good now some people will wear false lashes for the news I'm just not one of those people I don't want to spend an extra 15 minutes applying false lashes every single day I don't I don't think that cannot be good for your eyelashes it's just not something I'm willing to a invest in and B, spend the time doing and C, possibly impact my eyelash health. And I have also in the past done eyelash extensions and let's just say I'll never do them again. I did have kind of a reaction. I had a lot of issues and that was a few years ago and I'm still actually dealing with some of the issues. I am fine with just good old mascara. After I throw on my mascara, I will go in with a little pencil liner. It is in shade Teddy. It's kind of a dark brownish shade. It's also by the brand Essence. Once again, a very affordable brand. It's just a little pencil that you can sharpen. Definitely a good product. There's nothing crazy special about it. It's just a good little eyeliner. All right, and my camera died right in the middle of that, but we were talking about eyeliner, I think. So anyway, after my eyeliner, something I didn't want to forget to tell you guys that I like to do is I actually go back in with my eyeshadow palette. I take a shade that's like a little deeper brown. I'll use this one. Sometimes I use this one. Sometimes I even use this one. And I just go right under the waterline. The eyeliner, I don't do super thick, so I like to do this. I think that it helps make my eyes look a little bit more awake, maybe open. I like doing it, and when I don't do it, I feel like I forgot a step. Up next is the lips. So I will start off with this NYX Professional something or other because it is sharpened off. It is just a lip liner in nude suede shoes. So it's just this little pinkish nude lip liner. I like to throw that on with this MAC 101 Blankety Amplified Lipstick. Once again, another nude and this is all I have left of it. In my entire life, I've never used up lipsticks until I got my job. I've gone through so many lipsticks, it's crazy. When you're doing a two and a half hour show, you're constantly reapplying it. I am drinking a lot of water throughout the show so I don't lose my voice or so I'm not raspy. So I do throw on my lipstick quite a bit during the show. 
Because I have such red lips naturally, I love nude colors. I think that they kind of tone down the redness of my lips. Every once in a while, I will also throw on this matte color in Laissez Faire. It's a little bit more of a pinky toned color. Also, when I do my lips, I like to have a little bit of shine on those. Not my face, but on my lips. Really any lip gloss works just to give them a little bit of a shine, but also because when I am talking all the time, it, it tends to dry out your lips, right? The lip gloss helps. It's almost like a chapstick that kind of keeps them hydrated that is all I really do for my face. Now, I don't use the setting spray. The Urban Decay All Nighter I did used to use, but I kind of found it wasn't making a huge difference in the overall look of my makeup or the staying power, so I just felt like, why spend the money on something that I don't see a significant difference from? For people who are coming into TV news and wondering about, okay, did you buy all of this yourself? That seems like so much. So some stations will give you a makeup stipend. So that's just where they give you a set amount of money to buy your makeup for you. My station doesn't do makeup stipends, at least not for myself. We actually have airbrush makeup that they provide for us that we can use. I don't personally use that just because I find that my own makeup stays better on my face. I don't know if you've ever tried to spray airbrush makeup on yourself, but it is not an easy task. And when you're half asleep in the morning trying to throw on some airbrush makeup, I just find that sitting down and using my own is, it just seems to work a little bit better for me. This entire routine or all of these products that I just showed you takes me about 20 to 25 minutes tops. I just will not spend the time putting on my makeup for an hour in the morning. I have finally simplified my routine. I know how to do it so well and do it quick. Simple tips to shorten your routine, I am all for. If you guys have any tips that help simplify your makeup routine, please comment them down below. I'm always looking for advice on how to make my routine a little bit quicker without making it look sloppy or skipping steps that I think are necessary. That's pretty much everything that I use in my day-to-day -day makeup when I'm at work. But I did say that I would possibly show you what's inside this huge big bundle bag. There is quite a bit of things in here actually, just really random things. Like I've got this dry finish working texture spray in here. It's just something gives me a little bit of volume. I don't use it every single day. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I've got some frizzies, which I have the frizziest hair ever. So anything that helps me get rid of frizz is an A in my book, okay? That actually leads me to something I didn't show you guys. So this is a little trick that I use. If you have very frizzy hair like me, this tip, listen up. This is the e.l.f. something or other. It doesn't even say what the name is, but I know what it is. It's the e.l.f. brow gel. It's a little duo. It's like an e.l.f. mascara and brow gel. It's just clear as you can see. What I will do with this is get up close and find these little frizzy hairs and and just push them down like that. So this helps when you're in a pinch and you have a ton of flyaways just sticking up. No matter how hard I try, I cannot get rid of all of them, but this definitely helps me get rid of some of them. So that is a pro tip right there if you have some flyaways that you're trying to get rid of. And I've also just got some things in here. Ibuprofen if I have a headache, I have some green tea in here. I do like to have tea in the mornings. That's pretty much it that's in my bag. I hope that that was informational for you guys if you're looking for on-camera makeup. The products that I mentioned here, I didn't just pick them for fun. I picked them because they stay on, they last, and a lot of them, like the Essence brand, very, very affordable. If you guys are looking for some dupes or something cheaper, feel free to reach out. I know a lot of really good dupes for these products. If you're getting ready to apply for your TV job, or maybe you just got it, or you have a job that you're in front of the camera, or you have a job where you just want your makeup to last all day, you shouldn't have to drop a ton of money on it. I've always been really into doing my makeup, but I have never had to do it so often for a job. So I've definitely figured out what products work, what products don't, at least for my own skin. I know this is not related to what's in my makeup bag at all, but this should be in my makeup bag every single day. This stuff is the best. I don't know if you guys have tried this before. Water Joe. It is caffeinated water, okay? Caffeinated water. It has no taste. This stuff is the best. So if you made it this far, here you go. Go buy yourself one of these. You will not regret it. If you're not a coffee fan, this has 85 milligrams of caffeine per serving, and there is one serving per bottle. So there's 85 milligrams of caffeine in this thing. But a couple other things that I did want to mention before I go are a few products that I use in my hair that sometimes make their way into my makeup bag. So I'll start off with this SGX NYC. Looks like this, it is called the Luminous Repair and Shine Spray. It says it repairs and strengthens hair with bond building technology. 
with argan oil for glossy glass hair for all hair types. I have very blonde hair as you can see and it is not naturally this blonde so I have to go into the salon and get it highlighted which of course causes damage. I like to use products that have oil in it. This one uh, I will just spray on my hair. It is a dry oil repairing treatment. I've only been using this for about a month or so so I can't say if I noticed the biggest difference but if it has oil in it, it definitely can't hurt. And let me go grab one more product. Okay, my hairstylist actually gave me this as a sample. It is the IGK Good Behavior Spirulina Protein Smoothing Spray. If that's how you say that, it's a keratin-like treatment in a can, 24-hour frizz control. Like I've mentioned, I've got the frizz, and this stuff is pretty cool. You spray it on your hair, wet or dry. I personally use it when my hair is dry. It's meant to help control frizz. I actually shower at night to let my hair air dry to avoid getting damage on it, and along with a ton of oil that I put into my hair to help it not be so dry. I've also been using this stuff. I was reading the reviews on this stuff, and I was getting a little bit Bit scared. A lot of the people have said that it made their hair feel very dry or coated it in a strange texture. I haven't noticed that. But something else I noticed when I was going through the reviews and reading about people's negative experiences with it is that they were doing it on wet hair. I have not done it on wet or damp hair. I've only used it when my hair is dry. I'll get out of the shower at night. I'll let my hair air dry and then I'll just grab this spray it on where my hair is frizzed. It's also a heat protectant. And then I will just go over it with a flat iron, which for me so far, I've been using it for about a week and a half. I really, really am impressed with the product. It seems to be helping a ton with my frizz. And like I've said, I've got a ton of it. I can't control all of it. Noticed a lot of people saying it did cause their hair to feel a lot drier. My hair feels pretty dry generally, so I don't know if I've noticed a huge dryness factor with it. I have been monitoring my hair just to make sure it isn't causing any damage to it. But like with any product, it affects everybody differently. Everybody's hair is different. Everybody's skin is different. So maybe all of these products will work for you. Maybe none of them will work for you. I hope that's not the case. But I just wanted to mention a couple of those products because hopefully they will help some of you guys. If you're looking for long lasting makeup or if you're looking for on camera makeup, hopefully that'll help you guys out. If you guys are wondering a little bit more about my makeup routine and wanna see how I actually put things on, I can definitely do that. But if you guys have questions about my hair care routine, how I curl it, what I use, shampoo, conditioner, whatever, please feel free to comment down below. I'm happy to answer any questions that might be able to help some of you guys out. But before I let you guys go, I think I should take you on a little trip with me to go visit my pride and joys. Let's go. Look at those peppers. So I have become the biggest plant fanatic. So these are like my little babies and I'm a really proud mom, okay? Those are just some of them. So let me take you over here to show you the rest of my plants. All right, check it out. Look at the little baby cactuses. I mean, come on. And then I've got my mint plant over there. Just kind of growing out of control. But now you know what I do in a little bit of my downtime. There are just a few, they're doing good. The rest of them are doing so-so. But I'm very proud because I've grown every single one of them from the seed. I didn't cheat. I didn't buy them from the store halfway grown. I grew these babies from seed to now. And I'm very proud of myself because I've never grown anything on my own. I've got quite a few plants. And as you can see behind me, Oh, I have a lot of plants. I don't have a problem, but I am warning you guys, once you start gardening, it is so addicting. And okay, for everybody who does not care about plants, just, I'm sorry, bear with me. Once you start, you will fall in love. And if you guys need any gardening tips, I'm your girl. All right, but we are back now. I hope you took something away from this video, whether it was how fun gardening is or whether it was a product that you think might work for you. If you guys have products that you think might work for me, please comment them down below. I'm always looking to try new things. I love makeup and I loved it before I got my job. If you guys liked this video, just give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button because I will be back with more videos. So stay tuned. Bye guys.